So we've all heard about this supposed upcoming Eric Carlson trade. It's been said pretty openly that Carlson wants to go play for a contender and GM Mike Greer is open to trading him, but it sounds like negotiations with any of the teams that inquire are not going that well. Of course, a big reason for that is that he has an $11.5 million cap hit for another four seasons, and that is not easy to trade. According to Greer, we're not going to just give him away and they're not going to retain a lot of salary. He feels like Carlson is a valuable enough asset on his own without having to retain. With Carlson's contract, even at 20% retained, 9.3 to 9.5 million, it would be hard for teams to find space under the cap to make that happen. Of course, it's Elliot Friedman who's reported that the two teams most in the running are the Carolina Hurricanes and the Pittsburgh Penguins. So we know it's going to be a pretty complicated deal to pull off and it's taking longer than you might expect. Probably it would require a third team to get involved and help take on some of the salary. With the cap the way it's been the last couple of years, you can see that teams are just not able to find any space to make deals or have dollars go up and down. So you've got the Penguins and the Hurricanes in the running and then of course Toronto fans had to jump in when they learned that Brad Tree Living had made a call on Carlson. Okay, well, first of all, the Leafs do not need this kind of defenseman. They already have Morgan Riley as their power play quarterback and offensive defenseman, and they just signed John Klingberg. Acquiring Carlson would make no sense. Just because William Nylander is in play doesn't make this fit. I mean, here's what their cap picture looks like. As for the Hurricanes, I could definitely see why they would want a player like Carlson where they need scoring, but something just doesn't add up here either. Carolina got Brent Burns last year and that worked out pretty well for them. In San Jose, when Burns and Carlson were together, it was like a struggle to be the number one defenseman. Neither one played that well. They had one good year and then missed the playoffs the next three years. So basically they thrive when they are the number one defenseman on their team. So Kyle Dubas, the new GM of the Penguins, has decided to pull out all the stops and try to put this aging team back together as a contender. I mean, what else can you do really with Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Gensel, an extremely strong core, and he's actually filled out the depth quite nicely with Riley Smith, Ryan Graves, Lars Eller, Matt Nieto. I mean, this team could be well in playoff contention and maybe into a couple of rounds. You know Kyle Dubas would love to get his new team further into the playoffs than his old one. The thing is, the Penguins are up against the cap like everybody else, and they would have to trade quite a few picks and prospects to even get this deal done, and then they're left still trying to find a way to get under the cap. But this would make the Penguins actually a lot more scary in the East. Imagine Carlson to Malkin to Crosby. But it looks like lately with all the cap movements and back and forth, the negotiations have stalled, so it might not happen at all. And I'm also hearing a little bit about some other teams, a team like Seattle that's on the rise and sees themselves having a season like the New Jersey Devils did. You could see a team like that maybe coming into play if discussions drag on. So which team do you think Carlson ends up on if he does get traded? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching again. Hit the like button. Subscribe to get all the new videos. We'll see you in the next one.